Hello students. In this video we're going to write a Taylor series expansion for some generic function f of x but we're going to write it in terms of h and the expansion is actually going to be f of x plus h. Now the x is the variable over which we're expanding and then you'll see that it'll come out in terms of h. So let me let me make that a little more concrete for you because this could seem a little bit abstract at first. So imagine that you're on a grid. Okay, so here is some point x naught, and maybe um, there's a grid spacing h between the grid points, right? Because remember, on a computer, you don't have a continuum; you have discrete points, and maybe you have these evenly spaced points. So here's some x naught, and then you're going to approximate it either x naught minus h or x naught plus h. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand about x naught, and we're going to approximate it x naught plus h. Okay, so we're going to focus on the approximation forward from the x naught. So we're going to expand about x naught, and then we're going to approximate at x naught plus h. And then you'll see I'm going to transform variables so that we get things in terms of f of x plus h, which is how you usually see the expansion in a textbook. So here I am doing the Taylor series expansion. So f of something is equal to, okay, you plug in the expansion point, right? f of x naught plus f prime at x naught, and then some interval minus x naught plus f double prime at x naught divided by two factorial, and so on and so forth for the quadratic term and now for the cubic term. Okay, and then plus dot, dot, dot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in where I want to approximate at, right? I want to approximate at x naught plus h. That's normally what you do is you just put in the point at which you want to approximate. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna approximate at x naught plus h. And when I do that, and I enter or substitute x naught plus h in each of these parentheses, notice what happens. The x naughts cancel. And when the x naughts cancel, you're just left with h's. So f of x naught plus h, at which we've done our approximation, is equal to f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times h plus f double prime of x naught over 2 factorial times h squared and so on for the cubic term, the quartic term, the quintic term, and so on and so forth, okay? So you will sometimes see it in textbooks written this way, f of x naught plus h, to remind you that that's actually, the x naught is actually the, the number you're plugging in. And you may think of the h as like a grid spacing, some, some approximation uh, grid that you're uh, performing this approximation on. Now, here comes the transformation of variables to put it just in this form of f of x plus h. It's very simple. Just let x naught be x. So in other words, you're looking at it as x is your expansion point and then x plus h is where you're approximating. So you're doing a forward approximation to x plus h. Again, you could think of the h as a grid spacing if you like. The distance between these two points on the grid is h. If I do that, then I get the same a similar Taylor series, same except for instead of x naught, I have x's. That's simply what's going on, and that's it. All right. Um, we could further write this in summation uh, series. This is summation notation and series notation by putting the big sigma in here, and so we'll have k goes from zero to infinity of the derivative of f at x times h to the k, because h is what's increasing in powers here. If you want to see uh, an example, here is cosine of x plus 3h. So here we just get the cosine, because remember, that's just a function back again. Okay, x is, again, the expansion point. If you'd like, you can think of that as x naught, or the number at which you're expanding. So you have cosine x minus, and the derivative, okay, the minus sign comes from the derivative of cosine. And then the derivative of minus sine is minus cosine, and the derivative of minus cosine is plus sine. So that's how you're getting all your derivative terms. And then I'm just taking the um, this 3h here, and I'm just plugging it in. So instead of having h to the k, I'm plugging in 3h to the k. So it's going to be 3h to the 0, 3h to the 1, 3h squared, 3h cubed. Okay. Similarly, you might have like a minus 2h. So e to the x minus 2h. So again, um, it's x is the expansion point, so I'll have e to the x for the first term. And then what's nice about e to the x is all the derivatives are e to the x. So I just write those all out, and then I have 
minus 2h to the 0, which is 1, minus 2h to the 1, minus 2h squared over 2 factorial, minus 2h cubed over 3 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. I'm going to factor out the e to the x to simplify this, and then we get 1 minus 2h. It doesn't matter. The uh, minus here, when it's squared, it becomes a plus. Then a minus 2h cubed, because the minus 1 cubed is minus 1. And then you get a plus or minus dot, dot, dot. And then I can actually write this in a compact notation. Minus 1 to the n, 2h to the n over n factorial. And I'm summing from n equals 0 to infinity. And the e to the x is sitting out here. And then if somebody wanted you to evaluate this at a specific point, they might say, like, what's e to the point 2 minus 2h? And you would put in e to the point 2 here and calculate that out. Um, so that is how you write a Taylor series expansion in terms of H. Good luck.